President Trump said that he fired John Bolton because he often disagreed with the advice that Bolton gave. Did he, fire, did he get fired or did he quit and did he leave the White House because he disagreed with you in particular? Okay. John Bolton okay. just texted me. Oh. Just now okay. he's watching. Can you and read it? He, yeah, he said, uh, let's be clear, I resigned. And I said, do you mind if I say that while you were talking? And he wrote, yes. The president's entitled to the staff that he wants. At, at, at any moment. This is a staff person who works directly for the President of the United States, and he, he should have people that he trusts and values and whose uh, efforts and judgments benefit him in delivering American foreign policy. It's what, this uh, did not entirely come out of the blue, though. I don't think anyone saw that it was going to happen today. Last night, you were told he would be here today. Yeah, I, I'm never surprised. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. And, and I don't mean that on just this issue. Um, it it appears that their differences were not so much ideological as they were tactical, particularly in the big three countries involving policy towards Iran, North Korea, and most recently Afghanistan. He was very hawkish uh, on Iran, for example. The president openly said that he wanted to negotiate with President Rouhani of Iran. If the circumstances were correct or the right, I would certainly agree to that. Look, Iran is a country with tremendous potential. We're not looking for regime change. John Bolton, in contrast, openly called for regime change. There's a lot we can do, and we should do it. Our goal should be regime change in Iran. He thought that the Iranian government is irredeemably evil, and there was no point in talking to them. In North Korea, President Trump would sort of wave aside a number of missile tests that North Korea continued making even as they were holding talks with the administration. Short-range missiles, we never made an agreement on that. I have no problem, we'll see what happens, but these are short-range missiles, they're very standard. Unlike President Trump, Bolton was very critical of them and said that they violated UN Security Council resolutions. But it was really the Afghanistan policy that sort of brought the disagreements and the internal divisions into the public. They're dead. They're dead. As far as I'm concerned, they're dead. As Zalmay Khalilzad, the State Department Special Envoy for peace talks with the Taliban, as he came up with a draft agreement, Bolton asked to see a copy of it, reportedly, and they refused to send him over a draft of the agreement. They said if he wanted to, he could come in and read it, but they would not give him a copy to take out. Or he just didn't think that uh, the, the deal that was being negotiated by Khalilzad uh, was a good one, and he was quite open and vocal about that. So there was a point last month when there was a meeting at the White House uh, between all the principals, really, uh, in national security and the administration. And initially, Bolton was not even invited to it. You had the head of the CIA, you had Mike Pompeo, you had a number of officials, but not John Bolton. And Bolton's aides apparently appealed to uh, Mick Mulvaney, the chief of staff, and so he finally did get to come, but he had to sort of, you know, push his way in to this meeting. So he was completely being sidelined. The acting national security advisor is Charlie Kupperman, um, and the fact is, the President of the United States asked John Bolton last night for his resignation. It was delivered today. John Bolton's priorities and policies just don't line up with the President's. And any sitting President has the right to put someone in that position that can carry out his agenda. That became no longer tenable, so the President made a change. Thanks.